Police say this man, 38-year-old Ramin Hodakaram Rezaei, stalked Zori Sadegi for months after listening to her podcast about gaining employment in the tech industry. This is in the town of Redmond, which is outside of Seattle. That's where three people are confirmed after a suspected stalker broke into a home there. friends and welcome 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 this is crime corner with jen and for those of you who don't know my name is jen and i talk about true crime cases on this channel if you enjoy my contents please be sure to like subscribe and to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of my future videos in this week's video we're going to be talking about a very successful woman whose life would be cut short by an incredibly disturbed individual the individual that we're going to be talking about today was a lovesick stalker who was obsessed over a software engineer slash podcaster. And their disturbing behavior would go on for about a year until eventually coming to a tragic and honestly frightening end in 2023. Zora was 33 years old at the time of her passing, which was in March of 2023, so just earlier this year. She was also a software engineer slash podcast host based in Redmond, Washington. Zora was living in an upscale neighborhood and in a $1.6 million home that she had purchased with her husband, Malad Nasseri. The couple were originally from Iran, but they moved over to the U.S. sometime about 2010 or 2011. And then shortly after moving over, they ended up getting married. Zoray's mother also would move over from Iran and she would live with the couple in their Redmond, Washington home. Both Zoray and Malad worked in the tech industry and they were very successful in their careers. Zore was a streamer online that would talk about the tech industry in Farsi. And as for Malad, he was an ex-Google engineer and was currently working as an engineer in Amazon at the time of his passing. The couple would only end up moving to Redmond, Washington in 2021 because that's when they would purchase their $1.6 million home. And honestly, it seems like things were going really well for this couple. They were financially in a great place. They had just purchased a new home together and they were doing incredibly well in their separate career paths. But this would all change in 2022 when Zore would end up receiving unwanted attention from a man by the name Ramin. Ramin lived in Texas, somewhere around the Houston area, and he owned his own trucking company there. He was also originally from Iran, but had moved over to the U.S. with his now ex-wife Nada. The pair do share a daughter and did remain good friends after their divorce. In 2022, Zore would do a stream on Clubhouse about the tech industry and how to gain employment in that industry. And Ramin happened to be listening in on that stream on that day. He quickly became a huge fan of hers and eventually... He would reach out to her and that led to some sort of friendship between the two. And according to Ramin's ex, Ramin and Zure would occasionally have phone calls together and they've met up in person one or two times. However, their friendship would come to an end towards the end of 2022 due to Ramin's escalating infatuation with Zure. Ramin would begin calling Zure more than 10 times a day and would even leave over 20 messages a day for her and her husband. On November 6th, Zore would verbally ask Ramin to leave her alone and she would begin blocking his number because things were starting to get out of hand. She even included key dates and information regarding their interactions from late 2022 in a document. Now, despite her attempts, he still managed to get in contact with her through different phone numbers. Ramin would send her messages implying that he was in her neighborhood and at times, he would book a room in nearby inns and call her from their phones. This is honestly so frightening. Aside from how annoying this whole ordeal must have been for her and Milad, could you imagine just how terrified and unsafe she must have felt in her own home? The man knew where she lived and he made sure that she knew that. Now things would continue to get worse. 
in December 2022. On December 20th, Malad was leaving for Australia. And as soon as he left the home, Zore would receive a knock at her door. And when she went up to her door and looked through the peephole, she would find Ramin standing there, holding flowers. Now, this man waited for her husband to leave the premises before doing this, which means he was parked somewhere in her neighborhood, watching her house and just waiting for the right time to pop up at her door. Zore would end up calling the police, which was a great move. I mean, she obviously should have done that, so I'm glad she did do it. And Ramin would end up leaving her home. However, despite the authorities now being involved, he didn't seem to care. Ramin didn't seem to care. He didn't seem to be terrified about this because his disturbing behaviors would just continue to escalate. Ramin would keep on calling her house. He would keep on leaving messages for her and for her husband. And he would begin sending gifts like jewelry and scarves to her house. Records even show that on February 22nd, just weeks before the crime, Ramin would send Malad 82 texts on Telegram. 82 text messages to her husband crazy. And things would continue to get worse because Ramin would now begin leaving voicemails, threatening voicemails using foul and harsh language. And at times, he would even threaten to end Zare's and Malad's marriage. At some point, he would even begin acquiring the phone numbers and home addresses of Zare's friends. And by early 2023, Zora had already contacted the authorities a number of times and was even in the process of getting a protection order issued. The order was filed and issued in March of 2023. So when Zora went to file the protection order, she did present the scarf and the jewelry that was delivered to her home by Ramin as evidence. And she would also state, and I quote, Ramin has bursts of anger and is completely delusional. These delusions make me fear for my life and the lives of my loved ones. Now, in December of 2022, Zore did undergo a back surgery, which meant that while she was recovering, she had limited mobility, and because of this, she was terrified that she wouldn't be able to react quickly if she needed to. In the protection order that she filed, she would state... All of this has caused me great distress and pain. And now I am suffering from a deep-seated fear for my safety. It has taken a toll on my recovery. I haven't been able to open the curtains in my bedroom out of fear of him being outside watching me. Authorities were apparently trying to serve Ramin with this protection order but unfortunately, they were struggling a little bit here because they couldn't pin him down to one location. He did own a trucking company and he was a truck driver as, you know, that was his profession. So he did move around quite a lot, which made it really difficult for authorities to locate him for an arrest and also to serve him with the order. Now, despite the protection order and the fact that the authorities were aware of the situation and were involved, things would just continue to take a turn for the absolute worst on Friday, March 10th of 2023. Sometime around 2 a.m. that Friday, Ramin would make the drive to Zore's home and would find an unlocked window around the side of her home. He would let himself in through that unlocked window and would make his way into Zore's and Milad's bedroom. He would then pull out the firearm that he had brought in with him and would fatally shoot both Zore and Malid. Luckily, somehow, Zore's mother was able to flee the home when she heard all of this going on and she was able to escape without harm and would run over to a neighbor's home and call 911. And when the authorities arrived to the scene, what they would find would be absolutely devastating. Malid was the first body that they found. He had somehow managed 
to make his way through the house and out their front door and onto their lawn after being shot in the chest. But that was as far as he would go because he would collapse. He wouldn't make it. When the EMTs arrived to the home, they found him on the lawn. They would try to give him CPR, but it didn't work because he had already passed. Inside the home, the authorities would find Zoe's body. She didn't make it through her fatal shooting. And in the home, they would also find Ramin's body. He had taken his own life after shooting Zoe and Malid. I truly feel so incredibly sad for everyone involved in this case. I feel awful for Zure and Malid, who, again, were assaulted and attacked, murdered in their own home, in their safe space. And I feel incredibly sad for Zure's mother. She luckily survived, but now she's gonna have to live with this loss for the rest of her life. How is she ever gonna feel safe again in her home? And Man, like she's in a country where she likely has no other relatives and the only relatives she did have were murdered in their own home. I also feel really sad for Ramin's ex and for the daughter that he left behind because for the rest of his daughter's life, this is how she's going to remember her father. It's honestly just so terrifying. Like I really hate cases where victims are assaulted or murdered in their own home because to me your home is your safe space it is the place where you should be able to 100% relax and not worry about anything bad happening to you so to me for it to happen in their home is one of the biggest violations ever the fact that Ramin stalked Zure for almost a year and made them feel so uncomfortable in their own home. It just makes me so angry. Because if you don't feel safe in your own home, or if you can't feel safe in your own home, where are you supposed to feel safe in? I really cannot imagine how distraught Zora must have felt to not feel safe in her own home. And then the fact that she contacted authorities, but yet this still kept happening. And really, they weren't able to help her. To need to be so in fear of your own life and safety and then know that no one is really able to help you, that must have been absolutely horrifying to her. This woman did everything right. She contacted the authorities. She told the man to leave her alone. She blocked him. She went and got a protection order, but yet the law wasn't able to save her. It makes me so sad for her and for anyone else that's gone through or is going through something similar. No one should ever, ever, ever be made to feel this unsafe. Unfortunately, that does bring this case to a close. Um, I know it's a very short video, but when I read about this, I was just like, I want to talk about this case because it is so important for us to talk about these sort of situations because there are a lot of women out there who go through being stalked or harassed and made to feel unsafe. So it's important that it's talked about and that we're aware of it and that we support each other with it. If you're going through something like this as a woman or even as a man, if this is happening to you, contact the authorities. Make sure you take all the measures you possibly can to protect yourself. Lock your doors, get security systems, like whatever you need to do to make yourself feel safe. It's the sad reality of our world. This stuff happens. So just make sure that you're like, you're paying attention to your surroundings, that you're aware of what's happening, that you take the right measures, contact the authorities. In this case, the authorities, the law failed Zura and her husband but it's not the case every time. So just make sure that you do reach out to authorities and that you take your own personal measures to ensure your safety. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and for listening to that little rant right there. Um, I really appreciate you guys supporting my channel. And um, as always, if you have any case recommendations, please shoot them through to truecrimebagentaeye at gmail.com. And yeah, just please stay safe out there, everybody. And take care and I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you.